Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to take some time and dye and prep our traps for the upcoming trap season. So trapping season has been in about a month. To be honest, I really don't get to do a whole lot of trapping until closer to the end of deer season. So I'm going to take an opportunity now to uh, inspect the traps from last year, make sure they're all still in perfect working order, get them dyed and set for when I finally do get a chance to set some steel. So the first order of business for checking your traps is to make sure nothing's physically broken. So I check my pan, I check my dog, check all my links and my swivels, make sure everything's still kosher. I also make sure I have my tag in place. I also set my trap, uh, make sure it releases fine, make sure the pan's not bent at all, uh, make sure I still have the desired tension that I'm after, and I'm ready to go. Now anything that needs a quick fix, I usually do it right then and there. Uh, anything that requires uh, a little bit of time, I usually set it to the side, go ahead and get it dyed while I have the dye out and ready, and then I'll go back and fix that when I have the time. So these traps have all been in service and used for quite a while here. So they've all got a little bit of surface rust. They've all been dyed several times in the past. If this was a new trap, I would have to get a little layer of rust on it first. Uh, I like to do that usually by spraying with vinegar, laying it outside. Uh, no matter what you do, they're coated in oil from the factory. So you have to wash that oil off and then give just a light coating of rust so the dye has something to adhere to. So the coil spring trap here is a offset jaw. So there's a small gap right here. With these, I don't do anything special before I dump them in the die. This is a standard jaw trap. Now what happens is when I dunk this thing in the die, everything's gonna come out a nice dark color except for the jaws that are closed. So when that's opened, especially in a water set, uh, if it's a silver trap, they're gonna see a little bit of the silver. If it's a rust color, they'll see something different about your trap circle. In the ground, it's not as much of a big deal, but in a water set, it can be. So I always put something in the jaws. In this case, I just tuck a link of chain in here. I used to use nails, but I didn't have any handy. So the chain got used just to hold these jaws open temporarily. Now, every trap I have gets put in the die. Uh, what's especially important is the dog proofs because it's got a canister like this. Uh, a lot of times bait will get wet and just gum up the works. So I always make sure the trigger's free. I run water through until it comes out clear and there's nothing uh, hidden inside here that's gonna cause me issues once I put it in the dye. Uh, the conna bears, they all get dunked right in also. Uh, most of my 110s are all set underwater anyway, so these things have a hard life. They usually come out pretty rusty. Uh, with a conna bear trap, you're never going to wax it. Uh, with the type of dye I'm using today, I don't wax at all, so that's not an issue for me. If I was using a traditional logwood dye and then waxed as a separate step, I would wax, I'm sorry, I would dye my conna bears, uh, but then not wax them. These things are fidgety as it is. Uh, with a waxed conna bear, you're just asking to get your finger snapped. So this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say inspect my traps. You can see here I've got a wire uh, missing off my trigger. Uh, again, this is going to get dyed today. Uh, I don't have a, a fix for this right now. I'm probably going to convert this over to a pan or some type of baited trigger set, uh, but I don't want to have to deal with this dye more than once. This is going to get set up and dyed, then put in a separate pile for later. So the product that I'm going to be using today is Andy Stowe's Speed Dip. Uh, I really like this product. Once I found this, I stopped using logwood dye entirely. It goes on pretty darn tough. Uh, you can see some of my traps still get rust on them, but those are the ones that are submerged long term for usually most of the season. Uh, my ground set traps, I usually don't have an issue with. Uh, this makes a nice uh, speedy trap and it protects it quite a bit. All right, so this is brown trap dye, but you can see it looks pretty darn black. Uh, it does turn more of an earthy brown once it's on the steel itself. So I got a clean bucket here. And I'm just going to add it right to it. Then the gasoline. I'm just going to go ahead and rinse through. All right, so I've got just a little bit of gas in here. And I'm just going to stir the bottom up. Try to get that last little bit of dye out of here.
Okay, so I just got it all kind of stirred up now. It's definitely more brownish than it was when it first came out. So this stuff works so good and so fast. Uh, I have in the past put multiple traps together and dumped them in. Uh, but to be honest, I wasn't really saving any time. And I get a more thorough job doing them like this. Uh, this is not something I do commercially. So, you know, this is purely entertainment for myself and to work on some skills and stuff. So if I take a few more minutes to do it right, it just makes me uh, better in the long run. I used to be more uh, more particular about the traps on the pole behind me, making sure they didn't touch or anything. Uh, they will leave a mark if they're touching. It's not a super concern to me. And the critters didn't seem to bother, so uh, to mind the difference either. So here's a mildly rusty uh, double spring counter bear. And it just is returned to brand new, or actually better than new, just with a quick dip. This product completely amazed me when I switched to it. I mean, people have used black walnut and logwood for years, but I do believe this is better. Now you can see when I had it in that paint can how thick this stuff was. And I did have issues uh, with my dog proofs. This is a... Uh, little grizz I believe and the issue was me I was double dipping it thinking I was doing something better and you can actually gum up the uh, the trigger on these things so just treat it like normal it's nothing uh, nothing but a quick dip pick it up let it drain Now, I do have a couple of these little Grizz knockoffs. These are a Z trap. Uh, these are actually powder coated, and the powder coating's holding up for the most part. They're about two or three seasons old, but some of them are starting to chip. Uh, I don't think I've ever done anything to them. We can see the spring starting to rust a little bit, and the uh, trigger bar starting to rust. So I'm going to dip the whole powder coated trap in. And you saw I washed all these traps and made sure they were all functional. That had just a little bit of residual dirt on it. So here is a power coated and dipped uh, trap. So once I turned the camera off just to beat the darkness here, I kind of got faster and got a little messier. Uh, but still, this is, uh, this is not a bad job at all. You know, my hands will be stained for quite a while. You don't want to wear your church clothes when you're out doing this. But it's a pretty, uh, pretty straightforward process. Uh, it's not without its negatives. Like I said, I think the biggest negative is the fact that uh, it's a thicker product. I kind of like that. I kind of like that for how it coats the traps but you do have to exercise the triggers and make sure nothing's gunked up in the wrong spot but realistically if I was doing a traditional wax and dye uh, you've got to do that anyway all right so just a few more to do uh, that was one quart of speed dip to one gallon of gasoline and I think I've got maybe five dozen traps done and I've got at least half of the solution left 
So it's pretty economical. I think this was uh, $10 for the dye without the gasoline, obviously. But uh, that doesn't store so well. Uh, I've got it in a plastic bucket right now. I'm going to try to put a lid on it and reuse it, but I've had it get really sludgy really fast in the past. All right, so till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.